Hi guys, hello and welcome to another C Sharp programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how to calculate the leap year. So to get started, I would like to accept from user a four digit year. And we'll be looking at some of the things that you should keep in mind when calculating leap years. Because when calculating leap years, if it's not a century year like 1900, 1800, 1600, 2000, then it must be completely divisible by four. But if it's a century year like 1600, 1700, 1800, 2000, then it must be completely divisible by 400. Okay, so now let's get started. In order for us to accept some input from user, uh, of type integer, I would like to declare a variable of type integer and accept an input. Now notice you probably would have seen something like this written out in some of the programs. And when you try to do it yourself, you run into an error. The reason is because it does requires you to type a statement, which I'm typing on line number nine, which is using static system dot console when you write that instruction then it automatically understand all your writes and read lines and you don't have to constantly type console dot write and console dot read line anyway let's get started so first of all I need to make sure I need to check to see if the year entered is a century year or not and as I told you to make that check we need to first of all do what Make sure that it is completely divisible by 100. And how do you check to see if it's completely divisible by a certain number? Well, we use a special operator called modulus. What modulus operator does, after performing the division, it gives you the remainder versus giving you a quotient. So now when you uh, modulus year by 100, you now check to see if you get a remainder of zero. If you get a remainder of zero, that means that you have found a year that is a century year. And also remember that two equals to in C sharp means comparison and a single equals to means assignment, okay? So now that I've found it to be a century year, now I can notify the user that yes, you have found a century year. Yes, it's a century year. Now let's check to see if it's a leap year or not. And as I told you, to check for the leap year or not, if it's a century year, it must be completely divisible by 400. If it is completely divisible by 400, then I can tell the user that, hey, it is a leap year. Otherwise, it's not a leap year. And remember uh, that when there is a single instruction associated with an if condition, writing the curly braces for the block structure is not required. However, if you do that, still it won't complain. So if the year is completely divisible by 400, and if I'm, I'm basically talking about a century year, then it's a leap year, otherwise it is not a leap year. Well, what we are doing right now, if you haven't paid attention to, is what we call nested if conditions. So the first level of if condition checks to see if it is a century year or not. If this if condition fails, then you will not visit any of the inner ifs. You will only visit the inner if if the outer if is true. If outer if is false, you will jump to line number 32. You will jump to the else. Okay. Now that I'm in the else and I know for sure that it is not a century year, so I can notify the user that, hey, it's not a century year. So now let's do the basic calculation to see if it is completely divisible by four, just like 400. So I can pretty much grab the same code that I have up there, copy it and paste it and change it to be completely divisible by four because it's not a century year, okay? Now let's test this program. So I will click the start button and when it shows up, I'm going to be running uh, multiple tests. One of the tests would be to check to see how it works if it's a century year. For example, I now have, let's say if I enter year 1600, which is completely divisible by 400. So it'll say it's a century year and it's also a leap year. 
And also one more thing, to hold the screen, which I did not write the instruction, you need to type read instruction to hold the screen for output. So let's try again after that instruction has been added to the code. Let me enter 1600 and now it shows that it's a leap year and it's a century here. Okay. Now let me try the year 1900, which is not completely divisible by 400. So even though it's a century year, it is not a leap year. Now let me test the code with a year somewhere between the two century years. Let's say the year 2002. It is not a century year and not a leap year. Okay, now let me try 2020, which is a, not a century year, but it is a leap year. So as you saw in this example, we went over uh, the example to check to see if it is completely divisible or is not completely divisible by 400 and 100. First 100, then 400. And then similarly, if it's not a century year by four, if it's completely divisible or not. You can write the similar application in the graphical user interface as well. Let's try to do that. So I'm clicking File, New Project, and now I'm choosing the Windows Forms app for my leap year check. And let's quickly create the interface. Now that I've created the basic setup of my form here, uh, now let me name my entities and set some more properties. So for the first text box over here, I would like to change its name property to txt ear because that's where I'm going to be accepting my ear. Uh, and then the second one, this is where I will going to be displaying my response. So I'll just call it txt output. Also, I will change the read only property to fall to true. That means I want it to be read only so nobody can uh, temper with the output that is displayed in this box. Okay, so now to get started, I will double click on the button after I've changed the names this to txt ear and this to txt output. I'm double clicking on the button and we're going to be writing our code over here. First of all, you got to remember it's the same logic as before. You grab the input into the variable. So you accept a four digit ear from the user, okay, which goes into a variable. However, now the input instead of coming from the console is coming from a text box. So txt ear dot text. So I grab the txt ear, which is the name of my text box, which holds the ear, and I grab the text property of that, and then I convert it into the integer, and then store it into ear variable, okay? Now the rest of the logic is very similar that I need to make sure, check, check to see if the ear is completely divisible by 100 if it's a century year. In that case, I will now be displaying the output in the text box. The text box, which is text output, I will be displaying, yes, it's a century year. Now, if it is completely divisible by 400, then I will going to concatenate to the txt output box that, yes, it's a leap year. Otherwise, I'll say it's not a leap year. Let's do a quick check for century year before I build the rest of the logic. So I'll start the application. And as you can see over here, I'll enter the year 1700 and make a check. Yes, it's a century year. No, it's not a leap year. Okay. Now let me do a check for year 1600. Yes, it's a century year and it's also a leap year. Okay, now let me build the else part, where if it's not a century year, then it must be completely divisible by four to be a leap year, and not completely divisible by four to be not to not be a leap year. So, similar stru structure as the previous code. The only difference between the graphical user interface code and the console code is your input and output statements. You don't have read and write lines. Rather, you're taking the input from a graphical user interface and giving the output back to the graphical user interface. So over here now, if I enter the year to be, let's say, year 1524, 
and let me click check so it's not a century year however it's a leap year okay however if I now do a check of the year 2001 so it's not a century or not a leap year and the other code that I wrote before still works the same way okay so now you have seen the same solution in both environments in the console environment as well as the form environment and the language of choice here is C-sharp you could very well write the same code in Visual Basic the only difference is that you would have to follow the Visual Basic syntax or Java it's very similar in Java except for you have to then make some changes uh, Java doesn't add the data to the text boxes the same way the C-sharp does however give and take the main logic will stay the same. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. For your convenience, I will be adding the source code in the video description. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And please write in the comments if you would like me to create computer science-related videos on any particular topic. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye-bye.